The Metal Beauty returns for a second helping. Or something. That's right my friends, Geekom's A8 Mini PC has arrived with the latest generation AMD flagship. Are you excited? Are you barely holding on to the edge of your seat? No? Just me? <laughs> oh sh Well, you just might be wondering. What else has changed since the Geekom A7, apart from the CPU upgrade? That's a very good question, and I'm glad you asked it. Just cut to commercial. Ease Us To Do Backup Home is an award-winning backup solution to keep your data safe. Backup, clone, upgrade, or transfer your system easily, and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. Geekom's A8 features a lovely Apple inspired metal case design and is one of the smaller high end mini PCs around, following closely to the original Intel NUC design. It feels very nice to hold in the hands thanks to its rounded edges and hefty solid feel. Inside this one is AMD's current flagship Ryzen 8945HS, an 8 core 16 thread CPU with Radeon 780M graphics. So, exactly like the 7940HS found in the Geekom A7, right? Um, but it's got better AI performance. So yeah, that's exciting. AMD's gotta pump that share price while AI is a hot buzzword in town. Geekom's A8 starts at 699 US dollars. That includes 32GB of DDR5-5600 along with a 1TB NVMe SSD. As usual, Geekom has provided me with a coupon you can use with the links in the video description to save an extra 5% on Amazon or their website. So starting at $664 as of this video. With the accessories, there's one interesting change. The A8 brings back the VESA mount, while the A7 went without. Mount it on your monitor, wall, or wherever else you have in mind. Port-wise, it's identical to the A7. Triple USB 3 10 gigabit, with two of them on the front. One of the USB-C is USB 4, while the other one is 10 gigabit and supports display out only. I tried both USB-C ports with my monitor and neither allowed power to go through. So you're stuck with a barrel jack power supply to power the mini. For networking you've got Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN and a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E. Another thing I like that returns is the full sized SD card reader on the side. Always a nice extra. You can have four displays on this one by using both USB-C and HDMI ports. Windows 11 Pro is included on this mini, and the OS came up clean when scanning for rootkits and malware. During the Windows setup process, you can't skip signing in with a Microsoft account. So here's my little tip to get past that. Don't connect to the internet, press Shift and F10 on the keyboard. Click into the command box and type OOBE forward slash bypass NRO. The mini will restart and you will be able to skip the sign in when going through the setup by choosing I don't have internet. Take that Bill Gates! My Ubuntu test with the latest version of a USB mostly worked, except for wireless and Bluetooth. So same problem as the Geekom A7. Wide internet is okay though. Looks like this MediaTek chip is still exotic hardware, but you might be able to find a driver online. Speaking of the wireless chip. The Bluetooth range on this one is shorter than other minis I've tested. My Bluetooth audio speaker started cutting out when I moved further than 3.5 meters or around 11 feet, and that's with a wall in between. So far the best result is just over 5 meters. Opening the A8 hasn't changed. The rubber feet are glued on even though they also slot in. Underneath each one is a screw. Watch out for the Wi-Fi cable on the bottom lid, as there's little slack and you're bound to become upset when it snaps. A metal plate with four more screws is up next, which cools the NVMe drive by using a thermal pad. Again, we have an Acer branded Gen 4 NVMe SSD and crucial DDR5 5600. Underneath the Acer NVMe drive is a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E card Ubuntu didn't like. No further storage expansion is available, and again, the memory doesn't have a fan to cool it so we'll likely see the same results as the A7 when it comes to gaming. Alright, so let's see how Geekom's A8 holds up in the benchmarks. In single core Cinebench, it shows a slight improvement over the A7. And by slight, I mean very slight. Low single digit percentage. Other 7940HS minis have a slightly better result as well.
The A8 is near the top of the chart with multi-core. There are only a few minis above it in this test. And of course, the A8 now joins the Geekbench 6 score. Unsurprisingly, it's the best performer in this small sample. It's also near the top in the H.264 software video encoding test, only beaten by the Alloy 9 from the AMD side. A new addition to the benchmarks is AV1 video, and both software and hardware encoding is tested. The A8 is once again at the top here, and the iGPU really cuts down the encoding time drastically. From the limited research I've done, it seems that AMD's VCE hardware encoder doesn't provide as good video quality results as Intel's QuickSync, and apparently Nvidia is the leader with their NVENC encoder, while software gives the best results, but takes a lot of time. AMD's Radeon 780M is still the king of integrated graphics, and unsurprisingly, all the top results are from the CPUs that feature it. The difference between them all is very small. Whether the CPU and memory is kept cool enough during long gaming sessions is the more important metric. Does the A8's DDR5 memory throttle and cause a drop in frame rate after being pushed? We'll check that out right after the SSD benchmark. This Acer drive has really good sequential Gen 4 read and write speeds. Might be the best I've seen so far. Interestingly, it didn't perform as well in the A7. Okay, so to test if there's DDR5 memory thermal throttling, I might as well use the same game I tested the A7 with. Tekken 8 at 1080p low with FSR2 upscaling gets to 60 frames per second. But after 15 minutes or so, the frame rate drops. The CPU holds up okay, but the DDR5 chips get hot and the memory throttles performance to cope. Here's another example with Forza Horizon 5. So, you won't get the full 780M performance for longer durations under load. This is why we're seeing more and more minis adding a second fan, which blows air onto the DDR5 sticks. Interestingly, an esports game like Valorant played fine without a noticeable drop in frame rate even after half an hour, but it is a CPU heavy title, so it does make sense that it's not stressing the DDR5 memory that much. Another option to game on the A8 is to use the USB 4 port with an external graphics card enclosure. Here I'm using my Razer Core X eGPU with an RTX 3070 graphics card. I've tested 4K video editing on the A7 and it did fine. The A8 also handled the same project without any major stutters or drops in frames as you'd hope from the flagship mobile CPU. Another thing I checked is if Geekom's A8 has the S3 Suspend to RAM Sleep Mode implemented, which the A7 didn't. Unfortunately, the A8 stays on and just shows the Windows lock screen. There aren't any options in the BIOS to turn on S3 either. Just a few options here such as Fan Mode, which is set to Performance Mode by default. So unfortunately, no Windows Sleep Mode. AC Loss Control and Wake on LAN are also available. And that's it. Like its predecessor, the A8 has a low idle power draw of only 8 watts. The maximum power draw of 102 puts it slightly higher than the A7. A max CPU temp was better than the A7, and that's because the fan is louder and pushing out more air in its default performance mode. Although one difference is idle fan noise has improved. And again, the metal plate cooling solution for the Acer NVMe drive worked well, and the drive stayed speedy. With all that out of the way, it's conclusion time. Here are my pros and cons. The Geekom A8 has a very nice metal case design. It looks cool and feels premium. I'm glad to see the VESA mount return for those that use it. Geekom offers a three year warranty compared to other brands which usually offer one year. The NVMe drive is fast and it's kept cool. An SD card slot is always welcome. What I don't like is that there's no cooling for the DDR5 memory, which thermal throttles under certain conditions, like longer gaming sessions or higher ambient temperatures. Sleep mode still doesn't work. There's no additional M.2 storage slot if you want to add more. The 8945HS barely performs better than the 7940HS found in the Geekom A7. I guess it comes down to whether you want the improved AI performance for stable diffusion or whatever else. The metal case, as cool as it is, does reduce wireless range 
as it mostly uses the bottom plastic cover to transmit and receive Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And that's the Geekom A8 Mini PC, an incremental improvement with AMD's latest flagship, mainly pitched at the AI enthusiasts. If you're interested in the A8, links and coupons can be found in the video description. Or if you prefer a cheaper Intel option, the Geekom Mini Air 12 is a great budget mini PC and you can check it out right here. Cheers!